So I realized that the audio was not uh, audible to most of us, but uh, I, I guess uh, it's the Zoom platform which is not able to project the uh, sound. So I do hope that you were able to see the video uh, and its content. So um, it's about 6.34. Sarika, should we start? Yeah, sure, Rashmi. Okay. So uh, welcome, everyone. My name is uh, Rashmi Mandloi, and I lead uh, beyond diversity uh, as a managing partner. It gives me great pleasure to introduce the eighth webinar um, that we have been curating in this uh, uh, you know, lockdown. Uh, we had amazing speakers from across the world coming over. And uh, today we are very, very fortunate to have uh, three, four leaders with us today. Uh, Sarika is going to be the moderator and she's the director of development Flaksha. We have Mohit Tukral, who's the founder and MD of Vectera. Uh, we have Paroma Roy Chaudhary, who's been a mentor all, and, and a great supporter for us in Beyond Diversity, and she is a senior director at SoftBank. And we have Anu Prasad, who is a fine founder director for India Leaders for Social Sector. So welcome all of you, all the all the speakers. It, it's it's a great it's a great opportunity for our, all of us to hear from you. Parika, um, before I hand it over to you, I would like to you know sort of minutes if you have if you are from your permission to talk about beyond diversity because we have a lot of people on this platform uh, and i would want to you know sort of give them a little bit of uh, peek into what we do so um let me just move this slide okay so um beyond diversity we believe that we can actually build a better place so we talk about celebrating differences and ex accepting it. Um, so we've been working in this space for the last uh, eight years right now and have impacted closer to about 100, 150 organizations. We've impacted about a lack of individuals. We are known for our mentoring program for our women leaders where we have impacted about 5,000 women leaders. Um, you know, to just tell you a little bit in a snapshot as to what we do, we of course do DNI consulting. We do a lot of social impact advisory work. In fact, our We The Change program is in, in association with NASCOM and GenPact is a very well-respected program. We do a lot of research. Every year we come out with a research so that we can talk about what's happening around diversity in the country and across Asia. Uh, we, of course, do a lot of leadership development and a mentoring program is one of them. Uh, mentoring and coaching, we do a lot of it uh, in our programs. And we build advocacy by, you know, sort of, building positive linkages between business communities and people. So that's what we do. And uh, it, it, it gives me great pleasure to, you know, sort of see everybody attending the session uh, week on be a week and, you know, sort of showing faith in beyond diversity. So without further ado, I would like to now hand it over to Sarika to take it over from here. Uh, thank you, Rashmi. Rashmi, can we do the stop screen sharing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. And um, I would really request my speakers to come on uh, the video. We have Paroma, Mohit, and Anu, some of the three amazing leaders I really respect a lot um, and have had an opportunity and the privilege to know them well enough. Uh, in fact, uh, I think the discussion which I'm going to have with them, I've actually learned a lot from them uh, on this discussion. And that's why they're not only friends and uh, my uh, leaders, but they have been my mentors and sponsors in their own ways. So I'm very happy to have you here. And uh, thank you so much, Paroma, Mohit, and Anu to do this. Um, we really look forward to having this discussion with you. Um, just to, before we start off uh, the session quickly, uh, I'll just basically give you a brief background about myself. My name is Sarika Bhattacharya. I, as Rashmi pointed out, I started my journey as an investment banker with Merrill Lynch. And then I spent more than a decade to co-found uh, Beyond Diversity. And uh, I still remain uh, very much involved in it because it's very difficult to cut off the umbilical cord out there. But uh, I remain as a stakeholder and a board member and a strategic advisor to it. But I'm wearing a different hat now, uh, starting my third innings in my career, uh, where I wanted to pursue my uh, next passion of higher education, as well as wanting to leave a legacy for future generation in the form of building a new future tech university. And that's Plaksha University. Um, and I, what I do is, I, director development is a very fancy word given to fundraising. So I'm wearing my hat of banking again, 
and doing one of fundraise for one of the largest collective philanthropy right now in India. So very, very happy to be here. And uh, in this whole journey of my transitions, Paroma, Mohit, and Anu, all of them have played in some form or the other some role in that transition. So I'm very happy to have all three of you out here. So uh, you know what? Uh, since we are three women out here, today I would like to give a chance first to the man and start with Mohit. Uh, and also the fact that he is also one of my stakeholders in Plaksha. So while Mohit is a founder and managing partner in Viptera, which is an uh, entrepreneurial venture which he started two years ago after working for two decades in Genpact as a very, very senior business leader out there, running one of the largest business vertical and largest revenue uh, model out there. Now he is also wearing another hat, which is a founder and trustee of Plaksha University. So Mohit, uh, I would like to start with you in terms of you started a journey, a typical journey, which we all think of you, you know, after doing our engineering MBA or whatever graduation in MBA, move into a corporate world. But after 20 years, you decided to take a plunge into entrepreneurial venture. And a lot of people I keep hearing from is that, you know, job mein maza nahi aara. I should also try this hand on. And sometimes uh, we all who have taken entrepreneurial ventures always try to give a word of caution. So I would like to understand from you, your life journey, what prompted you to make this transition and decision? And uh, what would you say to some people who want to take this plunge? Look, so thank you very much for uh, having me on this panel with, uh, you know, two people I've known for, I think, 20, 20 plus years, right? Which is Paroma and uh, Anno. Um, and, uh, and I've known them closely and uh, uh, in... So look, uh, Sarika, I think, you know, it just that, you know, that at some point of time, that bug hits you saying you've got to do something on your own, right? And, and I think there was a point of time in 2017, 18, where we felt that one has to do something different, right? And because what you keep on doing, you get a sometimes bored with it. And sometimes you feel, you know, you have to break maybe, as you say, the glass ceiling, right? And you've got to do something very different. And uh, I think uh, the, your ability to take risk at that stage of your life is actually very, very important, right? So I would say, you, you know, I think what drove me to do that was really the, the, the saying, look, this is the time and this is the moment and you take a risk. And then this, that's the time you felt passionate about uh, what you really want to do, right? So you have to have that passion of what you want to do and you have to have that ability to take that risk, right? And look, honestly speaking, when we were coming out of it, uh, you know, uh, we had a great partner in Warburg Pinkus, right? I mean, uh, honestly speaking, it's very hard. I mean, I don't think so. If we didn't have a partner like Warburg Pinkus in our, that shift of our journey, uh, it would it have been a little bit more riskier. But I think partnering with them was just fantastic. Yeah? And they've been such a fabulous partner. So I think our, my view was a little bit saying, you've got to take the risk. You have to have the passion. And then you have to have a partner who you could really, you know, partner with and do something different, right? So even if you do startups, you have different kinds of partners in the ecosystem and how do you really leverage that ecosystem and really do something different? And I, I'm really, and we'll talk about it maybe later. I have been really pleasantly surprised of how the ecosystem came around us to support us and help us think through what we were doing here. So I, I would actually pause there, but I think that's, that would be my, you know, two bits on thing that you, how do you really leverage post that the ecosystem that you are in and how people come forward to help you. And there were people I thought would help me, they didn't, but people I never thought would help me, they did, right? I mean, so it's a very that. interesting world. Uh, and uh, I, I think it's been really a fabulous journey. No, but thank you so much uh, for sharing that. Uh, you know, I hear you on the passion. I hear you on the ecosystem bit. But also, if you could just point out in terms of that whole uh, transition, you, I mean, two decades working in a system, working in a process-driven organization where you have a whole janta and a crowd to support you with a team, large team, with a title and a chair and everything. Yeah. What, what was that shift post yeah. that? So I think, look, um, you know, a lot of people ask me, saying, man, I mean, you run a billion dollar business. You have 30,000 people who work for you. You have this massive team, you know, and life is good. Uh, and then suddenly you have one office and three people <laughs> and trying to do something on your own, book your own tickets and try to, you know, do your own TNL, which you never did for 20 years. 
so life was different right but i think it was really interesting and uh, i think we i had to personally i can tell you i had to unlearn a lot of things completely right i mean you take something for granted when you work in larger organization and i was relearning a lot of things which i never did uh, and you know whether it was working with investment banks or whether it was getting uh, counsel from uh, warburg and there are different stories of it and you know i can uh, share them at some other time but i think it was a very different way of us living our lives and and really changing the way we worked right and i think that shift was very important you know people used to ask me so do you feel withdrawal symptoms of not running 20 direct reports um and um you know 30000 people on the world a billion dollar business i said no i don't actually i actually felt that i was away from that day to day mundane operating review this review that review so much of internal focus and i was like breathing externally a lot and like i said the ecosystem never never rejected i know we still work with the bcgs of the world the mckinseys of the world i still had relationships with my customers i could go back to them and take advice uh, i could go to anyone i actually never felt that uh, people kind of said oh shit you know say there were few people who actually believed in your position and those are the people who dropped along the way but there were a lot of people who actually were in my life as part of my journey they came back and helped and advised a lot there so i actually never felt uh this whole challenge of saying oh my god you know i'm like in this world now when nobody is really talking to me or giving me any love as they would say <laughs> I'm, i actually it has it's been it's really been interesting so i actually leaving a very big brand and a big chair behind but also keeping faith in your own skills and competencies that's what i hear on that and also for doing me, something you have to believe in yourself it has to be yeah. brand what is your brand and what is your view of building right so i i and also the amazing networks uh, i mean the collaborations and the networks which is uh, the big mantra for every entrepreneur but thank you so much for sharing that I, i'll move on to in fact i'll move on to um, anu on this Anu, uh, you have done everything. You have done corporate career. You have done entrepreneurial assistant. So, for people who choose uh, to give a big back background about Anu, Anu has been a corporate professional, and then she has started her own venture. She has also worked in Ashoka University. In fact, she was the second employee in Ashoka. Am I right on that? Second person who was uh, in Ashoka University, Steve. Yes. Um, the very famous Young India Fellowship Program was started by her, and then ran. I mean, from amazing people, you. some of the amazing uh, social innovators have come out of that program and of course um, uh, you know co-founded and started ilss which is india leadership india's leadership social sector am i pronouncing it right india leaders for social sector india leaders for social sector yes. so right. this is so amazing because uh, one of the biggest challenge when i quit my corporate career i think what more than a decade ago um i wanted to venture into social impact space but i couldn't find a revenue for it i wish we had something like this at that point of time maybe i would not have become an entrepreneur and i would have gone through the program so just to give so anu why don't you share a little bit about your journey and also what ilss is doing because this is something so important uh and given today's scenario we need more and more social impact leaders now thanks sarika thank you for inviting me uh lovely being with you mohit and paroma so yeah so i'm going to begin sarika by just actually talking about india leaders for social sector and then i'll quickly go back to yeah. my journey prior but ilss easier to call it ilss is a two year old organization uh, i wanted to i wanted to go back to being an entrepreneur i think ashoka was doing really well had gone places and i wanted to do something new i have that bug clearly and one of the things that i noticed when i was at the yif the program that i ran was there wasn't enough uh, in terms of lifelong learning i would have a lot of senior people that would come to my program and say i wish there was something like this for us and i always thought and as the dean i used to be sitting in most of the classes because i did a bcom mba which i can tell you bcom is not an education it's a skill uh, and i really got an education at ashoka university you know the whole breadth the whole critical thinking so i really went back to school in a way uh, even though i was the dean because it was just i had that opportunity to really understand gender understand society social issues you know just the gamut of learning and uh, so it was always at the back of my mind that there should be lifelong learning in india why does learning stop when you are 
whatever in your 20s especially especially in india either you learn as a student which is funded by your uh, parents or later on it is funded by the organization so that that's mindset it. also has to change yeah. yeah and that's often sometimes just training you know what about just yeah. learning, learning. You know, the love of learning so if i have to describe myself i would say i'm a work in progress i'm a lifelong learner i will keep learning till i die but and the other thing that I realized when I was at Ashoka University was the fact that there was so much happening in the social sector. I mean, even the government is now, you know, I mean, look at COVID. The, the crisis has shown the role of civil society organizations. They're playing such a phenomenal role. I mean, look at Latika Tukral and the work I am Gurgaon is doing. It's phenomenal. So there was always this thing that how do I engage more uh, you know, with social issues. And it's also a little scary because your idea of social is always Mother Teresa kind of figures and you don't sort of relate. You feel like if you're not that, then how do you, where do you come? So for me, this was really beautiful that uh, uh, when I was leaving Ashoka, one of the founders of Ashoka, Ashish Thavan, he said, why don't I fund you? Why don't you start this? Because he was a philanthropist and he was frustrated. He wanted more talent to be coming in here, et cetera. So that's how we started ILSS, really to see if we could get senior corporates who are lit, like Mohit thinking, Yar, ye ho gaya. I've built the business. I have done the billion dollar work. I've networked the world. What to do next? And say, hey, come to the social sector. We need those skill sets. Um, and so that's the primary program at an ecosystem level, we are attracting the talent for the social sector, but also we are building a program on fundraising. We'll do one on people practices. So there are other programs we will do eventually, but that's that. And my background is, of course, I, I was with Amex. We set up the Financial Resource Center, which is shared services, financial services in the mid 90s. And then at TNT, I actually quit the corporate to be home with my daughters. So one of my careers is really a stay at home mom for a few years till they kicked me on my butt, send me back out again. Um, and so that's been my, yeah. So one career was being at home and I was a mom to these girls. And I think that was an important career. Nobody, we need to put that in the GDP really. And I'm sure you guys do phenomenal you work. And you may also, you get to learn a lot by these, uh, by when you're rearing these brats, I would say, because I have a teenager son, uh, son now. So I only call them as brats now. Yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah. Um, so that's where I've, so it's been an interesting journey. I, I do feel Ashoka was really instrumental in changing a lot for me in terms of getting a critical lens, you know, critical thinking, public service, understanding the social sector. So ILSS really is looking for senior corporate people who are thinking, I want to do something what is, the advice you, what is the advice you would give Anu, for people who want to now venture into social sector? Because a lot of people are now seeing and reflecting on their life choices. I mean, I did that a decade ago, but a lot of people are now going through this because of what this world is now turning to be. And what is that one advice you would like to give to them of who are thinking of venturing into this? So, I mean, I think the first and foremost thing is, uh, that I always worry about, I speak to a lot of people almost every day, somebody's calling me that's going through, a, you know, wondering what to do next. That's not necessarily the social sector, but hey, I want to get out of this. So what do we do next? And I'm always speaking to them. One of the first things I say is, don't feel like you're rescuing anybody. You know, it's not a question of giving back, do it for yourself. Yes. Because of course, we need your talent. Of course, we need people with these skill sets to come and work uh, for social issues, work with the government. Uh, etc. Government has opened lateral positions now, you know, as you know. Uh, so that's one thing. And of course, have the mindset of, you know, humility. You have to, like, like Mohit said, you have to unlearn, relearn, uh, learn, unlearn, relearn, because it's not the same context. The social sector works in a different way. You know, there is no hierarchy. You have to take people along. It's more democratic. Uh, you know, it's more heart based, it's head and heart, but it's a lot of heart commitment based. So the mindset has to be one of someone who is more empathetic, is more humble, is ready to start afresh, roll up your sleeves, you know, all the things that Mohit is talking about, get rid of that big ecosystem that you came from, because there's nobody going to be doing your, you know, meetings for you, you got to do it yourself. But come because it, it resonates somewhere in your heart. Don't come because you feel like you need to rescue the sector. That's 
that's the wrong attitude. Two out of three corporates, this is a long story I've heard many times, don't succeed in the social sector because they get frustrated. Sometimes things are slow, you know, things can take generations to change. So come with an openness to learn, have an open mind, uh, but always remember why you're there. And, you know, and never forget that because sometimes things will get really tough, really, really tough. And you've got to be able to hang in there because you know you're doing this because something within you is, you know, telling you this is what you want to do. So the highs will be high. The lows can be awful. And by the way, yeah, I must say, Sanika, I can see a lot of my ILSS alumni are in there. So okay. hi. Hi, Arvind. Sorry. I mean, you guys have a lot of fan following, by the way. I'm getting a lot of queries from Mohit's fans. I'm getting a lot of queries from... Anu's and then of course Paroma has not even come on board and there are questions already out there. So a lot of fan following out there for all three of you. But I must say Anu, uh, what you said resonated so much with me on the fact that it is head and heart and you need to kind of leave a lot of those. I mean, actually any transition, you need to kind of really unlearn a lot of those and relearn a lot of it. But thank you so much for sharing that. Paroma, I, I, I know, uh, I mean, what to say about you? You, you have had done everything. You've been into what? You started your career as a journalist and then of course moved into a corporate world. You worked in building ISB, uh, the one of the first few people, uh, I mean, one private university for public good as we call it, uh, ISB. I mean, not a university, but a management school. And then of course you moved to Google and now with SoftBank. How do you do it every time? I mean, tell us a bit uh, mantra about this transition and every time you come up like a phoenix, you know, rising from the flames kind of a thing. No, no, I have no such lofty ideas about myself. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you very much, Sarika, for having me here. And good to see Mohit, who's a longtime friend, and Anu, of course, and everybody else. Uh, so what worked? I mean, if something had worked, Maybe because I was always open. I've actually been a journalist, yes, worked in setting up a business school, then went to financial services and services, which is GE, briefly in Hewlett Packard, then telecom in Airtel, uh, technology in Google, everything. Everything. <laughs> and, everything. and now private equity in, in SoftBank. So, and, and at any time, I didn't know much. You know, I became a business journalist being a politics graduate an international relations graduate. And I actually went up to the editor and asked for a job without knowing how to read a balance sheet. And I got it. And I was in eight years. And then I got a journalism fellowship to Cambridge, which basically convinced me I don't want to do journalism anymore. <laughs> and then, you know, I got hired by McKinsey. That too was very funny. I had taken somebody's interview who had remembered me and that's how I got into ISP. And, uh, you know, the, the promoters were very convincing. So I left. Uh, a young son and a husband and just went to Hyderabad. Very intrepid thing to do. And similarly came back to doing communications in GE for a very, very tough boss. Mohit will know who I'm talking about. And, but it was a fantastic learning process. And then, you know, HP again in Bangalore because I wanted a global job. Uh, then coming back uh, to Airtel in Delhi because I had a 12-year-old son. It was very difficult doing a remote job. So, and, uh, and we would, my husband and I would take uh, 15 days, 15 days to travel and then got headhunted to Google. I got it, went to a job which had two people reporting it to me from 35 to set up the function. And then I came to SoftBank where I didn't know P of private equity. So well, that's quite an admission, I must say. I but how do you do it? So what is your mantra? You, you yeah. First of all, I think being open to doing new things, first and foremost be open and, and willing to adapt yourself. And what do I mean by that? I mean, you have to have an inherent risk-taking ability and a lack of fear of failure, you know, fear of consequences. I mean, I always have this, that so what? Fine, if I don't do well in this, I can always go back to that, right? So, you know, being a sort of a little fearless, sometimes even being foolhardy, works because things usually work out if your intent is good and your skills are transportable. So true. Yeah. You know, I mean, so open, openness, flexibility, ability to adapt and what two of my colleagues said before, an ability to learn new things and unlearn. 
you know one of the things which all three of you is coming out as common is that you know a believe in yourself b of course the passion to do something well and also to learn something new as anu said lifelong learner i mean uh, even mohit spoke about unlearn and relearn and you are saying that being open to learning something new so what would i would just pose this question to all three of you and you maybe you can uh, answer it in your own way what does exactly the career resilience means to you if you have to kind of share a bit about what in today's times we are hearing a lot of uncertainty about careers we are getting this fear and anxiety from people from people who are starting in their careers to even the ceos level everybody is facing that challenge what what does career resilience mean to you can i just can i take that first because sure. then i complete yeah. please everything. go ahead so uh, i mean this is ability to learn and un- unlearn i think a big part of this is leaving your ego behind mm-hmm. i have absolutely no qualms in asking an analyst as to what that deal means how will it translate i mean he might be half my age but doesn't matter he knows that more than i do so you have to have to leave your ego behind sometimes your position behind and you know all the others uh, i mean all the things that mohit and anand talked about and the second thing i always think is very important is that being able to transport your skills mm-hmm. you have to do be first of all very good at what you do i mean you really need to do know your business well to have that credibility and have the openness to adapt yourself to different industries now how does that happen for an aware person it's it's easier and it's easier for say functions like hr or marketing or communications public policy which are somewhat industry agnostic but what happens when you are 15 years with banking and floundering as to what to do your your business has merged you've been laid off many scenarios why don't you look at a new sector you can easily become the coo or ceo of a fintech startup right or if you had very strong 20 years of sales or operating experience you could become a vc or even a late stage growth investor i'll i'll, I'll you know what I, i think these are very good points out here i'll, I'll ask uh, you know mohit to uh, you know chime in out here in terms of what you think emotion uh, career resilience would yeah. mean over you know, and also emotionally because sometimes uh, emotions tends to overplay a lot more you know some of the decision making becomes a lot more emotional rather than logical so how does one combat that also when thinking about this i guess so me anu uh why don't you take it up more why don't you anu okay anu why don't you I mean, I am going to ask this question. I'm not going to leave any one of you. So I'm going to ask all of you. Yeah. I'm sorry. So I thought that was for Mohit. So just repeat it again. Sorry. Uh, okay, Anu. So I'm talking about career resilience. What does it mean to you? And also in terms of some of these decision making at times are far more emotional than logical. How does one combat that? Okay. So I see. Uh, if you look at, I mean, just look at what the what the way the world is changing. I mean, you know, your even a small thing like the the, the big story around the fact that you can you have more computing power in your f- iPhone than the the rocket that landed on the moon, right? So I mean, things are changing really fast. And ten years ago, you wouldn't have had somebody called a cloud manager or digital. Or, you know, so careers are changing. There are mega trends happening. I think the key and post COVID, the key to anyone that's seeing how how fast the world is moving is you know a couple of things like you know building agility uh, every crisis is an opportunity I, that was my mantra when we first you know we went into lockdown and suddenly uh, one didn't know what firstly i come from the not for profit sector so there was funding that was drying up you know sarika the challenges of all that but i would keep telling myself every crisis is an opportunity every crisis is an opportunity so just being able to sort of segue into keeping that open mind seeing how you could use this crisis to sort of do things i mean we are all having zoom meetings it's the new normal so there's going to be a lot of changes i think some of the things as a leader i have learned to build is a lot of trust a lot of ownership accountability in my team uh, i'm okay actually that i don't see them uh, as long as we are accountable we are on zoom we are talking you know how it is so one gets used to the new normal and in terms of um, emotional uh, uh, um what can i say about that i think uh, sarika i 
of course, sometimes decisions are, you know, based on emotions, but I, I've always believed one of the key things for anybody to succeed, and I maybe sounds almost foolish to say it, but just having enough self-awareness. I think that for me, uh, you know, just understanding what keeps, what drives me, what really ticks for me, what keeps me going has really helped me. Having, uh, I always tell, because you know, you're in that leadership role with younger people, have a vision for yourself, have a vision for yourself. But I'll tell you the first time I met a coach about five years ago, and I was talking about my career and he said, do you have a vision for yourself? And I thought, hey Bhagwan, I can tell the whole world to have a vision for yourself. Did I really have a vision for myself? Shouldn't I? So I'm just saying that, you know, sometimes just building enough self-awareness to know what, what and what are your values that really make you happy will keep you going at times when you feel very lost. And I get this with a lot of my alumni who are here that when they come into the, you know, they made this transition, they've been very successful. Now they're in this land where people are looking at them like social sector, may you know, Aato gayo, who are you, you know? And so there is this, they feel very lost. There is, we call them the 4 p.m. sort of uh, sadness because they want to talk to somebody at that point when they're feeling a little lost. I say, go back to why you did it and, you know, what really makes you happy. So I think when you're feeling emotional, just go, just understanding why you're doing what you're doing. And I just, you know, self-awareness is so self-evident, but sometimes I can't say it enough because these are things that, that have come to me kind of latish in life. So I can, I am just very candid in saying that I have figured things along the way, even while I may have been giving gyan to my, you know, students, uh, you know, but mm, I figured out, oh, okay, these are what, this is my drivers. So when things are tough or when things are changing, you know, just hold on to those things, uh, Sarika is what I think. No, thank you so much for sharing that. Actually, self-awareness is the key to it. And also, as I always say, start with why. I mean, and that gives you your purpose and just stick to that. Uh, Mohit, on, on, on to that, what does career resilience mean to you? And also, I would want you to share a bit about what is that one advice you would want to give to people out here during this COVID crisis of how they should be a little more resilient? And then we have some questions coming into the chat box. We'll take those questions now after this. Yeah, look, um... You know, I, I actually believe you have to be fearless and you have to, uh, you know, clearly, and if you have the passion, you can do a lot of things. Can you hear me? Yeah, you yes. can do a lot of things, right? And, uh, you know, I've always said this to my teams who have worked with me and there are a lot of people on this call actually I recognize. You know, in a journey of your life, which is 30 years or maybe 40, and if one or two years go into a different trajectory, life doesn't change. Nobody remembers those one or two years. And you know, so look at uh, your whole journey as a marathon, not as a sprint of 100 meters, right? Mm -hmm. And I think today's world is more about, let's look at the sprint versus the marathon, right? Because it's a 30, 40 year journey, right? And you have to figure out a way in that journey. If you have a one or two year of a blip, uh, you know, don't be, 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 little bit patient about it, it'll come back if you are good at what you do, you're passionate about things, you're fearless, you have faith in yourself and respect in yourself. And like Anu and Paroma also said, I think it's, it's something uh, you, you have to believe in yourself. And I, I truly, it's my belief that you have to believe in yourself. And that is part of that journey, that one or two years doesn't matter. So I actually tell a lot of people who talk to me in these world of COVID times, Hey shit, what's going to happen? You know, things are going to blow up. Business is going down. And I, my belief is that, look, this shall pass, right? There are so many things that have passed in the past and this shall pass, right? Something will happen. This is not, uh, this is not going to be transitionary for the next two or three years. And then a year or time will go away. Everybody will forget 2020, right? You know, people will write it off. That's fine. Companies will do a bunch of things to make sure that they, sort out a lot of their mess also in 2020 and nobody will ask, right? So this is the time to clean up things. This is the time to learn. This is the time to, uh, you know, do things which are different. And this is the time for, for people to actually experiment, right? Because this is, this is a hall pass here. You will get a pass. And I think that's the way to look at it. Uh, I like the way you said it's a hall pass here. I mean, it is, it of the monopoly is. or the life game. Look, Look, you have to look at it this way, right? 
We can all say, oh, the world is ending, I'm dying, this is going to happen. Well, look, you know, there is a problem. We all know there's a problem and we all have to work towards it. There's everybody, a lot of bright minds are working to it. I don't need to bother about it, whether the vaccine will come or not come. I mean, I'm not competent enough and I don't want to debate it, right? Somebody else is debating it. But I, I would only say, look, for everyone who today believes that, oh, what will happen to me? Yeah, maybe people will lose job. People will get salary cut. But look, if you are good in what you do, you will find something in six to nine months or maybe 12 months. And nobody will ever say, look, oh, you lost a job in 2020. People will not, people will say, oh, I know why you lost it. You know, it's fine. I know why it happened. So I think you've got to be very little bit more on the positive side of it and get things done and things will happen. Yeah. Look, look, the things might not happen for a lot of people. And I know people who have this struggle. But I think, look, that is, everybody goes through these things. And I, I would say, look, people like us and a lot of folks on this, uh, in this webinar, you've got to help around people as much as you can. Right? I mean, you have to find a way of, you know, and I think Anthony put a comment there, networking, yeah. collaboration. It's hugely important, man. I mean, you know, even I, and you know this, right? We are in Plaksha trying to place 60 kids at a time where everybody has a hiring freeze. What is working is our network, our network. And that network is saying, okay, I have a hiring freeze, but I still take two people from Plaksha, right? I think that's what we all have to do to help each other in this times, right? And it's a multiplier effect. Uh, I, I actually believe that that's the way I would say. And Varun, I will just add something to that you that you say. That I think the the power of collaboration comes through at times of crisis. You know, in in handling PR, uh, we we say something. The best relations are built in peacetime. So when you go to war, you actually can use them. So please, please build your networks and be as collaborative as possible. You don't know when you're going to need it, particularly in times of crisis. And I'll just add two more things. One is that, see, resilience is not only applicable to career. Resilience is a life skill. Yeah. Right. The ability to pick yourself up, dust off, and move on. It's very, very important to have that along with your self-belief. And again, I mean, whenever you feel difficult, face difficult times, you know that this will pass. And, you know, I have the ability, I have the self-belief, I have the network to look ahead and move on. Maybe there'll be a blip. Of course, this is a blip here. And then, but who knows? You can actually get steered in a completely different direction. You don't know even you were capable of. And three things which always help. Wisdom, which you develop over time. Humility. You are never big enough or, you know, I mean, your title is not that important, etc. Humility. Be humble. Learn from important. people. And last is, and most important, a sense of humor. Can, we, can, we can we ask the participants to be on mute, please? You can mute them yourselves, Yeah, I just think you should have a sense of humor. It, it, can, it can steer you through the, the best of things and worst of things. Just have wisdom, humility, and a sense of humor. And learning agility that Anu was talking about, it was very important. Great. So in fact, I have some questions now coming in. Thank you so much for sharing. Collaborations, networks, humility, passion to learn, passion to reinvent yourself. And also invest in yourself. I mean, what Anu is doing is actually encouraging a lot of people to actually invest in yourself, invest in your learning in that way. Uh, but also building credibility. And that possibly can be only built by also what Parama has always been speaking about, building your personal brand. Mohit also spoke about it to a certain extent. Building your credibility and building your personal brand, being seen and being good. Personal brand is being about, all about being good at what you do. There's some questions over here which is coming in. Uh, we have a question from Ujwal. He says, how does one experiment and select a self vision that is most aligned with one's persona? I think this is a question to Anu because she spoke about this uh, self vision part of it. So why don't you take a attempt at this? So who who, who is he? Who is the person? Uh, Ujwal Mararka. 
Okay, Ujwal. Um, Ujwal, thanks. This is a great question. I think that, uh, so this is a great time to also do some self-reflection when you're in COVID, you're in, at home. Just understanding, uh, you know, what really matters to you. Uh, is a is 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 a good time to start thinking about that. What really, you know, for me, I knew there were some things that were really important to me, and 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 everything I based on that. So a lot of my values are based on 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 the things that really resonate for me. And I mean, there are many things, and for different people, it could be different. But really, developing a vision of yourself is also firstly understanding your own value system and what really matters to you, and then you know maybe begin with the end in mind. How do you want people? you know, at the end of your life, well, you know, that's a Kobe habit. He always says, begin with the end in mind. Like think of when you're, you know, at the end of your career, how do you want to be remembered? If at all you want to be remembered. Uh, and so I think uh, it's really, uh, you know, just do some reflecting on, you know, trying to understand, you know, when have you been happy as to what really gives you happiness? And, uh, and then, you know, basing uh, your vision on that. Uh, I hope that's helpful. No, no, that's very helpful. In fact, uh, over here, Surbi was very, uh, I would say, Surbi, uh, sorry to hear that you lost your job after 17 and a half years of your career. But she has been actually talking about what keeps her going is this too shall pass. So she's also resonating with Mohit's uh, comment out there and good for to learn and experiment. You know, just for the, uh, a lot of people out here who are wanting to make this transition uh, and want to experiment during these times, one advice, uh, maybe in quick, short sentence or a quick three words kind of sentence, one mantra or advice you would like to give? All three of you, one by one. Paruma, why don't you take it? Openness. Open. Be open. Openness and being adaptable. I mean, you never know what you're capable of unless and until you stretch. So please be open and be adaptable. Be flexible. I mean, if required, if you really want to follow your passion, take a pay cut. Don't be afraid of losing your title. Because this I'll hold enough. on to this pay cut. I'll come back to this question. It's a very important question, which I wanted to leave some behind. Yeah. Uh, Anu, yes, anything for you from your side? So uh, very many, actually. Sorry, you were asking me only for one. I have like about five. Wow, uh, let's prioritize one for the time. <laughs> okay, uh, so I think, uh, 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 what could I say? Uh, okay, why don't you use whatever you, you were sharing? Yes. Oh, okay. No, so what I was saying is that, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, many false steps have been made by just standing still. That's a Chinese proverb, and I'm not saying it right. But you know, just keep moving. And that's fine. You know, just keep moving and things will work out. Yeah. Uh, be, one of the things I think uh, that's really important. And for me, it's been personally very important is be an active listener. I know we talk about human humility and learning, but we never talk about listening. And I can tell you, Sarika, some of the most humiliating moments in my life have been when I've been talking to my boss or so, and they're not listening to me. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so I think that just practice listening. Uh, it's a great, you know, talk to, you know, you're in COVID times, pick up the phone, talk to a bunch of people. I mean, Mohit is, you know, look at his collaborations. I can read it's global. Uh, you know, he's, it, there's goodwill there, but just, this is a great time to just reach out to people and have those conversations randomly. You'd be surprised. Uh, I even wrote to Adam Grant, you know, because I follow him on LinkedIn. I just wrote to him and he wrote back. So, I mean, you know, just write to people, just listen to them, hear, you know, hear what they have to say. Use this time to just sort of explore things because you're in this very, very difficult time. And once again, I say the social sector is going through an even more difficult time. So, uh, you know, just use this time in a positive way. I would say listening, curiosity are, are good things that you should develop. No, uh, no, because so don't talk about it enough. This is so important. You spoke about also going, picking up the phone and speaking to people. By the way, my best people, including Paroma, who was on our board for a while, were the ones whom I made on Facebook, friends and uh, Twitter. I mean, now I've got a bunch of people whom I've met only through social uh, media. It's all about just making authentic relationships both online and offline at the end of the day. But on, on that front, Mohit, uh, any, any one advice which you so would look, like? I'll I just uh, be quick on this. Uh, curious is something I think you've got to be. You've got to keep on asking people, you know, uh, you know, just don't do what you do as your job or what you're doing. I mean, you know, when somebody asks me, I'm like super busy, man. I have like a eight, nine hour day. 
you know, I'm talking to people who are startups and working with you on Plaksha. I'm doing some work on Viterra and Arise and looking at new things. So just keep on talking to people. You learn every day something new. Some of it, you will just leave it behind because it's not relevant. Some of it you will absorb. And I think what Anu uh, said, you know, I reached, I reached, you know, reaching out to people in your ecosystem is very important because when you reach out, you realize, especially in today's time, everybody has some time and air to listen to you and give you some advice, right? And, uh, is very high right now. and then it just helps. Yeah. I mean, there's no, there's, you know, we should not be uh, shy and afraid for reaching out. And I, I would just say that and just be a sponge, be curious. It's very helpful. It's you learn so much. You know, Mohit, just on that part of it, and what Paroma also picked up about the pay cut. There is this one thing. You know, when the times were good, we all got increments in our salaries. We got pay raise. We got higher promotions. Uh, you know, amazing off sites and fancy holidays. So while the good times were good, and we got good things along with that. Uh, and I would like this opinion on this, that a lot of people face this challenge that with the bad times to take those, you know, harsh, difficult decisions in their stride, whether it's in terms of pay cut, whether it's in terms of job loss, whether it's in terms of moving to some other industry where you have to leave your ego or a titles behind. Um, what's your take on it in terms of how would you ask them to look at it? What's your opinion? I, I'm getting a shorter at it, right? I, I think uh, people, this, this, we are in times which are difficult times, right? And, you know, look at the U.S., right? I mean, 40 million people job uh, filed for, uh, um, you know, job loss and, you know, unemployment, right? Um, uh, look at India. You know, we had the migrant population issue, right? Look at the hardship people are going, right? I mean, a lot of people on this call are privileged to be still sitting their home and get getting paid. And there were a lot of people who never got paid, right? And, and a very different level of our society. So I think if you have to look at it, you have to, you know, like I said, if you take a pay cut for six months or 12 months, it's not going to dent uh, so much. It might for some people, for some it won't. Um, and I think it's, it's a bit of, you've got to take that in your stride and it'll come back up in six, nine, 12 months, right? I mean, it's not that once you take this uh, uh, pay cut now, it lives for you for life because everybody understands why people are getting 20, 30% pay, pay cards or all that is happening. And even if you're moving and you know, Paroma said that if you're moving from one place to the other and the other places, look, I can tell you, huh, we, we, we got very well play, paid in Genpak when we moved to uh, do what we did with Wawa. It's a very different, uh, you know, model, right? It, the model is based on risk. And if we create value in the future, then we might make, so it's like, there's a, pot lying somewhere five years out, you don't know whether, whether you'll get the pot or not, but that's the risk you take, right? And uh, it, it was a huge pay cut, uh, if you look at it from that lens, right? And I, I would just say that you've got to just say that what, what is in the end you want to achieve. And if you do something today for what you want to achieve towards the end, uh, and that will give you uh, what you want to, I think that's the way you should look at it. And it's always not about money, right? I mean, in the end, you might achieve something. You know, I know people like Anu and uh, Ladika even really left very uh, good jobs and then started doing social sector. I'm sure Anu never got paid at YF what she got paid before. And Ladika obviously didn't get paid anything. So, uh, you know, so I'm just saying that you got to really pivot that. You look at yourself, right? You got from where you got were and what you got paid is very different. I think you, it's about living your own passion and dream and some passion and dream lead to what you want to do. And some would lead to, uh, you know, financial benefits as well. And I'm, I'm surely in that camp. That I will get some financial benefits five years from now, but right now I can take that hit. You know, people like yourselves think about life differently, but we are all in our uh, different boats at this time of life. No, but I, I resonate with that because what Anu said, also in terms of what are your values and what makes you happy. And as soon as you know that, what are your priorities, you can actually, you know, resonate with that and move ahead. Uh, one question I would like to leave, during these times, um, all of you have been amazing leaders and have led large teams. And this is one peep which we are getting from a lot of people that there are no boundaries right now left with this work from home. And especially Mohit, you recently acquired a company Arise. Uh, just before COVID, which is all work from home possibilities. 
what is that uh, one thing you would want to leave behind for some of the managers and leaders who are there in this call today? Um, how they should look at their teams? What is the kind of trust they should build? Because these boundaries need to be set while there is a work from home, but there is, there is a life beyond work as well. So how, how do you manage that well? And what is that one advice you would like to give people? Yeah, look, um, you know, we obviously bought a work from home business and we learned a lot from it. Uh, look, I think it's very important that you have to empower and completely trust your teams, right? Empowerment is very important. You know, you have to not, you have to go away from being a micromanager to a more macro uh, view of life, right? And especially as you go around building your careers. Uh, and I think that trust and uh, empowerment is very important, right? In your remote working, you can't get into this thing that, oh, are people working eight hours a day? As long as people, you know, I remember in my life, in my, even in my earlier job at Genpack, there were a lot of people who used to work from home. And my only, one request to them was like, I don't care what you do. As long as we all are getting our jobs and our work done, right? Mm -hmm. You work five hours, you work 10 hours, you work 15 hours, it's not my problem, right? And I think that you got to just empower and you have to have that trust and let people be. And I think when you let people be, uh, they come out much stronger. And we know in this work of home, I mean, it, it has a challenge, right? I mean, people I know, there are surveys done in Vietnam and other countries where people want to go back to work because they're fed up of being at home and they like being at work. It's socially, you want to interact. But I, my only thing is, look, as we, as we fast forward life post-COVID, it's not going to be the same what it was in the earlier. You know? So we will have to find better ways of social interaction. We'll have to find maybe lesser touch points of physical social interaction. So I think things will change. And I think this is the time actually also to shift your headset a little bit and start thinking that how will you deal with the world in 2021, right? Mm -hmm. We might be all back to the same routine. I don't know. But I think something will change. At least the behavior uh, and the mindset might change. Yeah, See, something will change. I don't know. I mean, I, I, don't I don't know. You, know. Yeah, I wanted to just add one point. One is that... Look, I mean, some of us already walk across time zones and boundaries. And in that sense, I have not had a conventional walk day for a very long time. It's, it's a mindset. And this probably is now accentuated by the situation that, that you're in. So, I mean, again, the question of openness and flexibility comes from both the employer and also the employees. Or that, you know, how open, how flexible, how adaptable you are. And of course, this is presupposing a high level of trust and empowerment. But I want to say something a little quirky, saying sure. that, you know, up to, it's also up to you where you draw your boundary. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I, people know, unless and until there's a crisis, I don't pick up a call before 9 o'clock. They know. And usually not after 9 p.m. at night, unless and until I'm on a U.S. call or some work emergency has happened. But I mean, unless and you, until you draw your boundaries, nobody is going to draw it for you, Sutta. <laughs> Just so true. think about it. And I picked up some tips from you and others also to draw those boundaries, which maybe yes. in another session we'll have draw done. Your boundaries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but fantastic on that. Um, thank you so much, guys. Uh, I know we are just on the clock. It's around 7.27. Anything which you would like to add on, I, I do uh, believe that there were a lot of questions on the networking, collaborations. Uh, we spoke about career resilience. We spoke about how things are going to change, about the transitions. In fact, I know there were a lot of questions for people who wanted to transition to social impact sector. I think uh, somebody has also posted a link from your ILSS. I hope uh, there, it's a great program, by the way, guys. I, I must uh, recommend it very highly. So anybody who is planning to foray into social sector, but yes, please take a, have a very strong heart for it. You have to have a very strong heart and a strong mind to it. Uh, uh, been doing it for a long time now. But uh, if you are interested, then this is the program for you. I highly recommend that. Um, any la last few words before we kind of wrap up and hand it over to Rashmi? Yeah, so sorry. I just wanted to say a few things about the whole, you know, as Paroma and Mohit spoke about, for me also, there's yeah. no deviation, delineation between work time and personal time. And I thought I was going a bit batty at some point uh, because you feel yeah. even more sort of uh, paranoid. So you're almost overcompensating. So a couple of things. One is, of course, just setting small rituals for my, you know, for myself. So, you know, 
which would take my day through in a way that I wasn't, sometimes I didn't know my weekends from my weekdays. And you know, that's, I, once my daughter gently suggested a therapist, uh, and then I realized I was going a bit batty and I needed to really come back to being more sane. And also with my team, I do feel it's a high trust, high, a highly empowered team. But one, you know, I just want to end by this very powerful saying, which I think uh, I have gone back to again and again, which is by Mal Maya Angelou, which says, people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And I think just for all the leaders out there, trust your team. And, you know, and, 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 you know, be good because everyone's going through a lot of mental issues too. There's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of uncertainty. So just make, you know, make people feel supported and uh, trusted. I think that's, the, as Mohit said, you know, you've got to trust people work from home may be the new normal and you can't, you can't be insecure about that. And that's like a leadership Thing that's very easy to say but it really needs to be worked on after all you have to trust you are the ones who hired them so if, if you are not trusting them you're not trusting your own hiring skills and that's what i always tell to the leaders and but yeah, thank you you know another thing be kind oh, yes. just be kind you know it's much simpler said than done just yeah. be kind you know there's so much to take away from this session today i mean i can't thank you guys enough i mean humility unlearning and relearning, passionate about what you do, building collaborations and networks, having a strong heart and mind, and this too shall prevail. I mean, these are a few of my takeaways. I'm sure there were many more takeaways for our audience over here. And uh, I would just like to end with this one note that however difficult the times are, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. And possibly in all our careers, in all our lives, we have always seen that while the good times are short, the bad times are even shorter than that. So keeping that in mind, I'm sure all of us will prevail and uh, will prevail, come out of it stronger, in fact. Um, so I'll just end the session over here. Rashmi, over to you. I do believe you wanted to share some notes, but thank you everyone. Thank you to all our audience over here for being a wonderful audience. I hope we have been able to answer most of your questions, uh, but I do know all three of them are very, very active on social media. So in case if we have missed out some questions, I'm sure if you tweet to them, uh, Anu is very active on Facebook. Paroma, of course, very active on Facebook and Twitter. And so is Mohit. So if you tweet to them, I'm sure I have, they are my go-to people for many questions. Um, tweet to them, write to them. They'll be there. And um, we look forward to having you guys in our future webinars too. But thank you so much signing off from here. Thank you. Thank you, Sarika. Thank you so much, Sarika. And Rashmi. I mean, this was a great experience and also seeing so many friends. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. And in fact, we are honored to have such a great esteemed panel. Thank you, Sarika, for moderating the session so, so nicely. And, uh, you know, there's, if you look at the chat, there are all the people saying that it's been on an amazing session and when is the next session. So I think we should, you know, get you all back together soon uh, and, you know, sort of get, get uh, our audience also to, you know, sort of uh, uh, look at other perspectives as well, but at a, at a different time. Um, but uh, thank you all of you. And uh, I know it's a uh, bang on time. And I just want to close the session by talking about our um, ID program. I'm just going to share my screen. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so this is the program that uh, we have just launched uh, this Monday. Um, in fact, it's, it's our cross-industry mentoring program that we have been very well known for and have also, uh, you know, got a lot of accolades. Uh, so we have now turned this entire cross-industry mentoring program into a virtual program. Um, and we are now taking nominations and applications for it. The last date for is it on June 30th. Uh, you can go on to any of our social media handles. We have been sending emails as well for people to apply. Um, you can, you know, write to us and, you know, sort of apply for it. Uh, again, it is a total virtual program. It's got personalized coaching sessions. It's got master classes. It's got webinars. It's got, uh, you know, it's got various tools and techniques to uh, make women leaders successful and the future leaders of the country. So I would, um, you know, urge all of you to, you know, sort of uh, nominate yourself or nominate your team members for this particular program. And I would now like to, you know, sort of say thank you to all our speakers and thank you, Sarika, 
uh, and we will take it through. I'm getting so messages on how it, why it shouldn't be extended. So it must have been resonated with some people. <laughs> and <laughs> no, it needs to come in small packages, Parama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I would also like to thank she, the people, our media partner, for this particular web, uh, webinar. And uh, it was being, uh, you know, webcasted live on Facebook uh, for She The People. So if people want to go back and you know look at this conversation, they can go back to the Facebook site of both Beyond Diversity and She The People where this recording is available right now. Thank you so much, all thank of you. you. Have thank a good you. evening. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone. Bye. Thanks. Bye.